So here we are in Photoshop. I'll make it a little bit bigger. And we are cutting out from our kind of full images the image sizes we need for our different attributes. So the last one I did was I have auto select layer here with the move tool. So I can just click on it and it will find the right layer. So that's about the size I need for those mountains. Now let's look at the blue mountains, click on that one. And I'm gonna do a rough cutout. But maybe before I do the rough cutout, I just do Command T, free transform. I'm gonna rotate it a little bit, make it look a little bit more like mountains. That looks pretty good. And you'll notice that when I hit Command T, especially at this resolution, and I change it a little bit, it might look kind of blurry. And it will look blurry until I hit return. And that's just because it's previewing the transformation. Transformations aren't in full resolution and saved until you hit return. And then it will sharpen back up. And then I'm just going to do a rough cutout around it. We will be talking a lot at the beginning of next class about how to do really refined selections and cleaning up. Now, I wasn't really thinking while I was talking, and I just hit delete. And luckily, it's a smart object. It won't let me delete it. Instead, what I want to do is Command J, duplicate it onto a new layer, and then take the smart layer underneath it and delete that. And that will give me a rasterized resource for that mountain. Next, I have the cotton candy. At any time, I can, I've already cut this one out because it was, you know, a really big file with a lot of non-cotton candy content in it. But I may make, make it a little bit bigger there. And then to kind of transition between the cotton candy and these background mountains, and maybe to fill in in this area, I have this rock candy. So because this is a transition, I might want to make this a little bit bigger. So Command T, Free Transform, enlarge it. And then parts of it are out of focus. So when I use my lasso, I want to just grab the rocks I think are useful, but it's still rough cut around them. Okay, then hit Command J, then delete the smart object they come from. And I'll move it out of the way. I'm doing a lot of Command minus and Command plus to zoom in and out. And now the licorice trees. It looks like about the right size. You wanna make sure you have the size you need. In fact, I might even make it a little bit bigger. And you can do any kind of transforming, any kind of warping, any kind of scaling, while it's still a smart object before you cut it out, because that will ensure that because it's still referencing the original file, the, the pixel data is not distorted any more than it needs to be for your transformation. But as soon as I cut it out, this rough cut and copy it with command J, then it's rasterized. And then now it, when I change its size, like if I were to make it bigger, it would lose quality because it's no longer a smart object. Okay, now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven elements, right? The only one I don't need to cut out is my far background element. And so I'm going to start with that one. This is assembling your collage. And I'm going to make it bigger. It's still a smart object. And I'm going to make it even a little bit bigger than my picture space. And one thing you can do is you can play with its opacity a little bit. Just so you can see your sketch kind of coming through. So you can see how that sky overlaps. Now, I really only need that sky up here, but I don't want to get any of that tower in there. So I might even, 
at a lower opacity, like decide to tilt it a little bit. How are you moving it around while it's still a smart object? So smart, mine won't smart. Let me do anything without it being rasterized. It won't let you delete from it, so it won't oh, let you okay. remove pixels, but it will let you rotate it, transform it. Okay. And so take full advantage of that before you cut it out. And we did this for the cartoon jumble too. We kind of moved them around while they were smart objects before we had to rasterize them to delete from them. So that's just something we'll get used to. So I think about right there. And before I hit return, I can see how that looks. Yeah, that looks about right. So now I'm gonna hit return. This is still a smart object, so well observed. And I don't need to actually change it, but eventually I will have to change it. So I'll place it because you can't delete pixels and you can't change pixels. You can stretch them, re reorganize them, but you can't change their colors. And eventually I'm going to want to do this to it. Play with its saturation, play with its hue. And I'm going to want to directly affect those pixels. And in order to directly affect them on a smart object, instead of having them as what's called a smart filter, I'm going to have to rasterize it. But I can wait to do that. But only on the background layer, because it's the one I don't need to cut out from. Okay, what I'm going to do is take that opacity to about 50%. And then I'm going to hit Command S to save. So I know it's there. And now I can start bringing in things like the jelly bean and shrinking it. Shrinking's always safe. It's enlarging things that gets a little scary. And I can maybe distort it so it's a little bit more planet shaped. Now, once you've cut it out, if you shrink it, it's not, and then enlarge it, you're still okay. As long as you don't go beyond Whew. what you shrunk it as. So this is this is tricky. When you're transforming, like right now, I'm warping, I shrunk it, I can uh, right click inside and I can rotate it. As long as I'm in an active transform box, it will give me the best quality pixels possible. But as soon as I, for instance, hit return, now, because it's not a smart object, Actually, this one is a smart object because it was already a PNG and didn't have to be cut out. Uh, if this was rasterized, so I'm going to go ahead and rasterize it. So I transform it. I make it small because that's in my sketch. And I hit return. Now it's rasterized at that resolution. So if I go back and I hit transform and make it big again, I've just lost information. Okay. But it, but as long as you're within the transform, so like right now, I can make it small, I can rotate it, and then I can decide, oh, I want to warp it a little bit. But it's all within one transformation. I haven't hit return in between. And then I decide, oh, I want to make it big again. Then I'm not going to lose any quality. But if you hit return, every time you hit return, that locks those pixels. And then it's starting with new pixels each time because it's no longer a smart object. So I'm going to go back in time in my history, just using Command Z to before I rasterized it. And I might keep it a little bit bigger than I need it and just keep playing with the shape a little bit. So these are all good questions. And often on our, our first compositing projects like this, we might have slightly, we might have slight issues with resolution when we really zoom in. And that's to be expected. And that's kind of, it's not the end of the world. You know, I'm going to sink that a little bit behind the mountains. And then I'm going to take its opacity down just a little bit. Just so I can kind of see what was intended and what I have. Okay, now I'll put the mountains on top. And I want that mountain there. I want this mountain here. 
And then I can decide, do I need another element in between? And if I do, this is a fun trick. If you remember internal compositing, it's when you take an element from an element and duplicate it. Since this is all cropped off, and this looks like a good kind of rock mountain top here, I can grab this, duplicate it, make sure I'm from in the right layer, transform it, and now I have a new mountaintop that I can kind of sink behind the others. So just kind of rough placing. And even though I have all this white that will eventually get trimmed away, maybe I could change the color of that a little bit, have it be purplish. And I'll, I'll edit the little strings of whatever this is in this mountain. So all three of these are mountains. So if I want to make my life a little bit easier just for the time being, I'll select all three layers by holding down shift and then put them in a group. And then maybe label that group mountains. And then I can just take the opacity down a little bit on all of them. And you see how they're fulfilling the intentions of my sketch. I might need a little bit more over here. And if I decide that's true, I can duplicate this one again and move it up over here. But maybe this time I transform it and flip it horizontally so that it looks different. <laughs> and I can alter it, you know, I'll alter it more as I refine it. But right now we're just kind of rough placing and then I'll put it behind. All that making sense so far? It's just, it's just kind of refining what we've already done with, with exercises. So since these are landscapes and I've got uh, different photos with different hues and saturations, yeah, that'll, I'll be able to match those yes. mostly later. Yeah. That's the next step. I actually am going to be showing you that step before we uh we do like refined cutouts of the edges okay so when you're when you're compositing we're trying to make it all believable right so right now we're just trying to get the size and the placement next we're going to play with three different direct adjustments what are called layer adjustments one is going to be the the brightness and contrast basically we're going to use levels for that we've done that before then we're going to play with the color temperature and we're going to use color balance for that. And that will make a big difference to help things match. And then for big changes, like if I want to change, I think I'm not going to have a green jelly bean sun. I might want it to be orangish or reddish, right? To make big color changes, we're going to use hue saturation. So those are the three and that will help make things match. And we kind of push and pull them in different ways. Okay, next, let's see, I put the cotton candy in. There it is. So let's take that opacity down. Oops, wrong layer. And this is also where you kind of decide on the order of things. So if the cotton candy goes about there, according to my sketch. This is a nice transition. So where do I want this? I want it behind the cotton candy. And it is. So you want to make sure everything's kind of layered in the right order. And sometimes it can help to, to label your layers. Sometimes students even give it color codes. Then my licorice is my foreground element. It's on top. And then just for the balance of the composition, I think I might want another foreground element here. And this is where you might bring in something else, right? So let's see, I've got this black licorice. That could be an interesting foreground element. Bring it in as a smart object. I need it to be maybe about that size. Rough cut around it. Command J. Delete the smart object. 
and just for visual sake, maybe play with 